Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I begin the interior doors. Last spring, I started to build my front doors, which I finished in the summer and installed during the fall. Now I really must build my interior doors. I'll make two, one to access the dust collector room and the other to replace this OSB sheet, which stops some of the cold from the shed from entering the shop. As you can clearly see, it's not really airtight. I'm lucky to have boarded the shed door with OSB because it cuts a little bit of the cold air. Because we have plenty of cold air these days. I'll finally be able to use the pile of wood which cuts a big chunk of space in my shop. But it's still less bothersome than when it was stored in the basement. But before I begin the work, we put on the tie beam the cedar I'm keeping to build the exterior shut door. Then I can mark all the pieces I need for the doors and cut them. After a while, I have all the wood I need for the two doors. But first, we need to make one side straight. At this moment, I'm really happy that I have built this jointer. Because jointing all those 8 inch wide boards on a 6 inch jointer would have been hell. After a while, I have a straight edge on all my boards. Now I need to plane the other side. And finally, rip them to it. Now with my plans measurements, I cut the rail and the mullions. When all the small pieces are cut, I clamp all the styles together and cut one side straight. Next, I cut the other side straight at 80 inches, the height of the doors. To avoid surprises later on, I clamp a full door and check if it's square. Then each joint is labeled. This way, I won't mess up later on. Then I mark the center of all the rings and place the bottom million so I can mark the lock ray. Then I can make all the mortises starting with the styles. Then the smaller pieces. Next, I reassemble the door, but with one domino on each joint. If I had the intention of building a door with a window, 
it would be done by now. But it's not the case. Now I need to mark the length of the top mullion. To do so, I lay the board on a scrap piece, which has the same thickness as the door, push it on the lock rail, then I can mark its exact length and cut it. Then I can put it in place, mark its center, and make the missing mortises. The mortises all could just be done with a doweling jig instead of a dummy nose. But I guess it would take more time. Next, I reassemble the door frame with the minimum dominoes necessary to hold it in place. And now I have to repeat all those steps for the second door. It's now time to chamfer the edges of the raised panel opening. But if you can't remember which way to route, there's no need to make the loser sign. Instead, use the sign to guide your router. The thumb points to the edge to route and the index in the direction to route. It's that simple. See? It's okay to be a loser when you use a router. Now that I know in which direction to route, I can make the chamfer. I don't want to make the same mistake I did for my front door, so I turn them around and make the other side chamfer. Now I must route the half-inch groove in the middle of the opening. To do so, I start by back routing the entire edge, so the wood's fiber will be cut for the final pass. But be very careful, because the router wants to pull forward. Then I can route the groove to its final depth of half an inch. When I'm done, that's what the edge of the opening of the race panel looks like. But all this running left me with a big mess to clean up. Next, I disassemble the door frame. Then with chisels and a router plane, I square up the corners. Now I'm ready for the panels. The first thing to do is check if everything is the same dimension as I planned. Then I cut the panel half an inch bigger than the actual opening. And rip it to size also. I lift the saw blade to the height of the cove I want to do. Then with the miter gauge set at 8 degrees, I trace a line on the table 
at the highest point of the blade. The 8 degrees is arbitrary. I want a wide cove and the lowest the angle degree is, the wider is the cove. Then I push a sacrificial piece of plywood supported by one of the door frame up to that line and clamp everything to the table saw. After barely lifting the blade, I cut the first pass of the cove. That's what the first pass looks like. I still have a lot more to make to have the shape I want. Then all the rest of the panels are passed over the blade. I do the eight sides of all the raised panels like this. Then I raise the blade just a bit again and repeat this all over again. I make about five passes and in the end I have two combs with a thickness of half an inch in their ends. But I have to goof something up and here it is. To repair this I mix epoxy in which I add some sawdust. Luckily for me I have a lot of sawdust. I pick some and add it to the epoxy. Then I fill the cut with this paste. Now I can get rid of all this sawdust. I did a lot of work on my doors, but if you want to see them hanging at their place, You'll have to come back next week on The Woodpecker. <laughs>